We're going now to look at one specific example of a statistical procedure that you're going to see a lot of and it's the chi-square test and please if I could remind you don't forget to use the practice Taoist tests they're there to help prepare you for any assessments you might have as well as just to make sure we understand the technique that we're covering. Now to recap uh, what we looked at in the first session the idea is that you have a sample of data about something and based on that sample you wish to make a general statement about the population that generated such data and the first thing to note is to do with the study design if you obtained the data using a randomized experiment you may be able to make a causal claim whereas if you're conducting an observational study which includes an audit all you have is circumstantial evidence so the statistical procedures in both cases is identical but your interpretation will be different and as we noticed and it's worth repeating scientific reproducibility is very important and one example of this is 2000 the year 2000 we saw pre-registration of clinical trials which has made a big difference to the quality of research and another thing you can do as a scientist is look for consistency of evidence now one small contribution to that is made by statistical methods where you wish to make a general statement uh, formally this is called inference but you wish to make a general statement about the population that generated the data that you examined in your procedure and to do that you can either use a hypothesis test or a confidence interval or both and a hypothesis test requires that you state a null hypothesis uh, which is the dull hypothesis you choose a primary outcome and you collect data and you perform the test procedure if it yields a p-value less than 0 0.05 at that stage you're entitled to reject the null hypothesis alternatively as we looked at last week if uh, last time you can construct confidence intervals for parameters of interest so for example you could look at reduction of blood glucose once patients are on a particular treatment now that also allows you to make this general statement but in addition it has the value that it lets you make a statement about the practical significance of the results not just that there is something statistically significant something sign something potentially interesting but that there is practical interest in those results so we have to deal with um, how you select an appropriate statistical test there are many resources that will help you with this, such as the interactive flowchart, which is linked here. And I would ask you to check the jargon, to have a look at that flowchart and see if you understand enough of the jargon to get through to the point where you select the test. For example, it's going to ask you uh, what type of variables you have. And there is a small learning resource on the course website in this folder that talks about categorical and quantitative and the type of variable can determine the kind of procedure you can use and the other thing that you need to remember is is the importance of selecting your outcome variable in advance of anything else you do so uh, the chi squared test of association is used for one specific scenario and if you imagine you have a crude spreadsheet and you have one row of data for every individual observed and you are going to measure streptococcus pneumoniae simply whether it was present or absent from a throat swab and you're going to measure smoking status whether or not they were uh, smokers and note that both of these are categorical variables so um, categorical variables they are nominal because there's no ordering necessarily associated with either and you might at this point like to freeze the video and go and have a look at that flowchart and see if this scenario gets you to recommending the chi-squared test of association so having got your raw data you produce a contingency table which is called a pivot table in excel cross tabulation in other software uh, whatever you want to call it but that table is a summary statistic it's it's not a variable 
and you shouldn't be thinking of the counts as discrete variables. What you have in your data are two columns of categorical variables, which are the observations on each individual in every row contains a categorical variable telling you whether an individual had streptococcus pneumoniae or not, and whether they were a smoker or not. And to make that very, very clear, this is what raw data looks like for this scenario. Each row is one individual, two columns, each representing a categorical, specifically a nominal variable, and whether or not they are strep positive, whether or not they smoke. And the chi-squared test of association, we're interested to know if there's some kind of relationship between those two variables. If you knew whether somebody smoked or not, would you make a better prediction as to whether they were strep positive or not? Now, what we have to do is, is summarise that raw data. And in, in R, you can use a command called xtabs to turn the raw data into a cross-tabulation. The, the contingency table, the pivot table, whatever you want to call it. So, for example, um, if you entered the command with strep smoke, strep smoke is the name of the data frame the raw data is in, and then you can apply the xtabs command, xtabs on strep plus smoking, and it will give you that cross-tabulation. And I would, I would again suggest you think of that as your summary statistics and not so much as your raw data. But you can create that cross-tabulation object and then apply a chi-squared test to it. And what we want to know is whether there's an association between smoking status and the presence of this bug. And just note, for instance, out of 674 individuals, a total of 108 are smokers and 56 non-smokers, and 403 people with the bug and 271 without. And we start with a null hypothesis that states that the two categorical variables are independent. Now, for those of you that want to know all the details, I'm, I'm going to explain it here. Uh, if not, you can fast forward through this section. But if, if you want to understand what we mean by, by independence and where the null hypothesis comes from, what we're saying is, look, the probability that any individual we pick at random is a smoker is 108 over 674. We had 108 smokers out of the 674, so the probability we select a smoker is 108 over 674. And the probability of somebody testing positive for strep pneumoniae is 403 over 674. And the probability that they have both characteristics at the same time, if the two categorical variables are independent, is just the product of those two probabilities. So the product that we pick somebody who is both a smoker and they are positive for the bug is that would be the probability that they were a smoker, 108 over 674, multiplied by the probability that they tested positive for strep, which is 403 over 674. And down below, you can fill a table with the probabilities. The null hypothesis says if the variables were independent, Let's complete those four calculations. There's the numbers you get. The probability of picking somebody at random from those 674 people and finding that they were both a smoker and tested positive for strep is 0 0.0958, etc. And what that implies, that's the null hypothesis. And what that implies, if the null hypothesis is true, we would have expected to see 64.6 strep positive smokers and we would have expected to see 227.6 uh, strep negative non-smokers for example so that that's what the null hypothesis is saying if those two categorical variables were independent that little probability calculation applies and therefore we end up with those expected counts in each cell of our contingency table our summary statistics and what we need to do now is have some way of measuring how, how different, uh, and I've, I've rather loosely called it distance, but how different is our actual set of summary statistics, our observed contingency table, from the expected contingency table. And the reason we use the test that is called the chi-squared is because there is this test statistic where we, we take for any cell which means smoker positive, 
set positive, we take the observed value of, of that cell and subtract the expected value under the null hypothesis, square this, divide it by the expected value for that cell, and then repeat that calculation for every cell and add them up. And statistical theory suggests that that test statistic follows something called a chi-square distribution, and it's that, that assumption, that belief, that lets us turn this measure of how different our two tables expected and observed are into a p-value. And once we've got that p-value, we can make our decision about the null hypothesis as necessary. So, we, we have explained for those who are interested how the, roughly, how the test works and how we arrive at a test statistic. And therefore, we feed our contingency table, the summary statistics from our two categorical variables into a chi-squared test. And it tells us the test statistic. It tells us DF, the degrees of freedom. But importantly, it gives us the p-value. And because p equals 0 0.19, we, we can see that is less than 0 0.05. And so we can reject the null hypothesis. And at that stage, we can say instead, if we prefer, the result is statistically significant. That's, that's often a, a piece of jargon you see associated with, with this. Sometimes people don't mention explicitly that they've rejected the null hypothesis. They'll tell you the p-value was 0 0.019. This is statistically significant. But what this means is we are rejecting the null hypothesis of independence. And we therefore believe that there is some association between those two categorical variables. They're not independent. So if we knew whether somebody smokes or not, we would be able to make a slightly better guess as to whether they tested positive for streptococcus. So in summary, what do you need to know here? You don't need to know how the test statistic is computed. And you don't need to know why we have a Yates correction for two by two tables. And you don't need to know what the chi-square distribution on one degree of freedom looks like. If it helps you to understand the test, the chi-square test is a very good one to work through and understand. So if, if you feel you need to know that to understand it, please ask. We can go over that again. But if you're happy to accept, there is this procedure that takes contingency tables in at one end and turns out p-values at the other end, that's, that's also fine. What you do need to know is that we are using a test that's been developed for two categorical variables and that the null hypothesis is one of independence. So if you reject the null hypothesis, it implies some kind of association between the variables. And what you need to do as a scientist is think is that really what you wanted to know? And in, in the very simple scenario you've got here, it, it's all you could know about the relationship between those two variables. But there are situations where you end up with cross tabulations and you want to know something different, something more than just are these two variables associated? And, and the most useful thing as a scientist is to concentrate on what this test tells you about the relationship between two categorical variables and, and whether that really is exactly what you want to know.